What's up guys, how's it going? It's John, and in this video we're going to take a closer look at the new Superboy SFC by Hyperkin. This is the third version of the Superboy game system that Hyperkin has released. First one was, of course, the original Superboy. This one was cool because it was the first Super, Super Nintendo handheld that looked like a large Super Nintendo controller. I love the design. The bad thing about these were the dependability. Mine, for example, doesn't work anymore. The screen uh, went out, so that was a huge issue. They did step it up with a Superboy S they released a couple years ago, and the, the biggest issue with this was it was 16 by 9. It wouldn't be a 4 by 3, which is what the normal ratio aspect ratio for retro games is. A lot of people complained about that. The screen kind of felt stretched. But they did definitely improve the, the dependability. This is a really great handheld. I still play my Superboy S handheld today until, of course, I got this one, the FC. The biggest difference between this one and the Superboy S, as you'll probably notice, the buttons are a little bit different. The FC is more Famicom button style, uh, as well as the aspect ratio. You can now play in 4x3. That's the biggest difference. And I'll show you how that looks like in a second. We're also going to compare this to a standard Super Nintendo. Uh, to see what it looks like as far as color palette goes. This is not HD. There's no HD out on this, unfortunately. It does come with cables to connect to your TV, the AV cables, but there's no HDMI. I'm, I'm assuming that will probably be happen in their fourth reiteration of this system. However, I do wish it was HD. I think, you know, they obviously are coming out with new HD retro console clones. It'd be nice for Hyperion to include an HD out for this, but in this case, it's not. Uh, and uh, one thing also notice, and I never realized this until now, but the buttons on the Fam Super Famicom, obviously they're colored, but they're also different. If you ever look at, take a closer look at a Super Nintendo controller, you'll notice that the Y and X buttons are more concave, and I've always been used to that. Uh, in this case, they aren't, and that's actually true to the original style of the buttons, because I have a Super Famicom controller, I confirmed, and indeed, those aren't concave. I've never really noticed that difference before, I don't know if you guys have noticed that either, but I found that kind of interesting. And it does make a difference as far as I feel for the buttons, because I grew up playing on the Super Nintendo, not the Super Famicom, and it's a big difference. Uh, and uh, I believe the PAL version as well for Super Nintendo is the same way as this as well. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, but let's take a closer look at this. We'll show you what's included in the box, do some, some gameplay footage. At the very end of the video, I'm going to share with you my final thoughts about the Super uh, Superboy SFC. I uh, appreciate you guys liking this video. That means a lot. Please subscribe. That's awesome if you do that. And we'll go from there. Thanks. All right, so let's take a closer look at the box first. Um, and uh, same style as you would see with the typical Hyperkin box. They've got this kind of cut corner there. It's pretty standard. Um, on the back, it shows you the different layout, the different button layouts, all that good stuff. Let's go ahead and open this up. Of course, you have the system as well. You do have this cable here to, to charge it, which is nice. So it's a USB with a micro USB uh, in there. Uh, tip, there is no adapter wall charger on it so very similar to like what Nintendo does with the 3DS's or the 2DS's whatever I guess they assume that you already have that adapter if you have a cell phone you probably already have that adapter not a huge issue but it doesn't come with a wall adapter so keep that in mind you can still plug it through your computer and charge it that way through USB that's not an issue uh, it takes it charges fairly quickly uh, about you know five six hours to charge I'm not quite sure how long the battery life uh, battery life lasts if I were to guess, I think closer to, to eight plus hours or more. So I've never really had any issues with the battery life uh, lasting and dying too quickly. The lithium battery. It also comes with the AV cables. This plugs into the Superboy SFC. And those are the red, uh, yellow, white cables. Um, you have a nice little travel pouch here for the Superboy. Uh, that's come came with all the previous two versions as well. Uh, and then of course you have your instruction manual. Uh, pretty basic information button layout. It does have a controller port in the front, which I'll show you here. Uh, so you can plug this into your TV and then you can actually turn it into a console. It doesn't come with any external controller, so be aware of that. These are the two speakers are here, obviously the, the buttons. I have noticed that the buttons are slightly smaller than your typical Super Nintendo controller. Uh, not a huge issue, but when you have big hands like me, I do notice that difference, but it doesn't really take away from the gameplay, but be aware that buttons are slightly smaller. Nice D-pad, feels pretty good. Uh, these ports work pretty well as far as controller ports go. Uh, start and select, buttons there top left, and your shoulder buttons at the very top. On the bottom, you have, uh, this is where your brightness is. So, and also you can change four by three to 16 by nine. Your volume, this is your uh, your headphone out. This is so if you have headphones, doesn't come with any headphones. Obviously the controller plugs, or obviously the cartridge plugs in the top there like so. 
Uh, it's compatible with most games, including any flash cards, like if you have an EverDrive, it does work with an EverDrive, so that is a bonus. I haven't had any uh, compatibility issues with any games I own in my library. It also includes, of course, Super Famicom cards, and you plug it in, and then this is where you, uh, this is your AV out to hook up to the TV, your on and off, this is your reset, you can p switch between NTSC and PAL, your power, and this is your DC, so you can charge it. On the back, you have a battery cover, which is screwed, there's a you know screw there to prevent that. Feels good. You'll notice it's kind of concave there, nice little grip. Okay. The original one uh, had that as well, but it's a little bit different design. They're all pretty much the same size. Let's go and power this on. This is Final Fantasy uh, 4. Now, if you have uh, any Super Famicom games, I recommend, unless you speak Japanese, don't buy Final Fantasy. And don't buy any RPGs because it's super hard to understand. That's max volume. If you can hear it. Not super loud. I wish it was a little bit louder, but not too bad. Now this is playing in uh, 16 by 9. Now to switch, you hold this down for. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's 4 by 3. To switch, you hold. Let's turn it down a little bit. You hold this down for three seconds. One, two, three, and it will switch to 16 by 9. So it does stretch the image a little bit. So people are some. Some people are fans of that. I'm not a huge fan of the larger screen. It just takes up the whole TV screen. If you prefer that, hold for three seconds, and it goes back down. Okay. Uh, it does grip pretty good. It holds in there nicely, but it doesn't like grip it super tight, which is nice. It's, it's loose enough where you don't feel like it's going to tear your uh, your boards or anything like that. Here, let's plug in this Total Carnage. This is a great game. Uh, if you ever played Smash TV, this is kind of the unofficial sequel to Smash TV in the arcades. Kind of an obscure game for the Super Nintendo, but really fun. Highly recommend it. Plays just like Smash TV. So let's plug this in and compare it to uh, normal, typical Super Nintendo and how it looks uh, visually. Okay? So, in conclusion, what I think about the Superboy SFC, overall I think this is a really solid handheld Super Tender clone, to be honest. I think it's probably one of the better ones on the market you can get. It retails for $100 US. I want to thank Hyperkin for sending me this review system to check out for you guys, so thank you Hyperkin for that. The only two downfalls on this are the fact that it's not HD, it doesn't have there's no HDMI cable, it doesn't come in that. So it is standard, it'll play standard on the TV, standard def. And when you're playing it through the TV with the AV cables, you can only change the aspect ratio on this screen, the smaller screen, you can't change the aspect ratio on the TV. So even though this blows up to 16 by 9, you can only play in 4 by 3 on the TV. Not a huge deal to me because I, I prefer 4 by 3, the original, but some people who prefer 16 by 9, just keep in mind you can only play through the TV uh, through this handheld itself. Now comparison, this is probably the biggest competitor. This is the Retro Duo Portable by Retrobit. This is also a pretty solid Super Nintendo clone handheld. The benefit for getting one of these is you can play also NES games through the adapter. This you cannot play NES games. However, uh, visually, this system looks better, uh, in my opinion. Also, visually on the screen, this monitor is screen is better than this screen, in my personal opinion. Uh, overall, it's a pretty solid handheld. I do recommend it if you're looking for a Super Nintendo on the go. If you're looking to get a Super Nintendo clone, this might be the one for you as well, because you can also play it on your TV as well, which is a plus. Thank you guys so much for watching. I uh, appreciate you guys leaving a comment. Thank you so much again for subscribing. We'll see you guys soon, and game on.